thank you so much for joining me. I'm Tracy, and this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take pre-owned items and turn them into one-of-a-kind purses, clothing, and accessories. And today, I want to make an accessory. It's going to be a scarf made out of vintage lace and crochet with red velvet flowers and green felt vines. So let's get to it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I want my scarf to be 75 to 85 inches long. And I went to my stash of vintage laces and these are a lot of table runners and some big doilies. And I'm just kind of laying them down to see what I like before I sew them together. Now I'll bring you in and dissect this a little better and show you how I sew them together. Okay, so here's one end. I have this table runner and has these cute little roses on it. And then a couple doilies right here and I will overlap them. And then I have these kind of they're doilies, but they're kind of wispy and flimsy, and I like that. I'm going to make that sort of a ruffle at the end, and I will pinch pleat it. And then I have another one of those. Did my voice just crack? Oh my goodness. And I will finish off the ruffle there. Now here's sort of the middle. This is the one with the little roses we just talked about. Now I have this odd shaped one. I will be sewing it from here to here and just let those ends kind of flop in like that. I'll explain a little better how I'm going to sew it, but I'm just showing you the layout right now. Got this one, now I'll take you to the end. Okay, now I have this pretty piece and the other half of those doilies that I'm making ruffles at the other end with. So I'm praying these are all cotton because I am going to use a writ dye that is not for synthetics. So when I sew these, I will be using blue thread because I am using blue dye. You wanna match your thread to the dye you're going to use. And how I will sew them, I will leave it laid out on my table like it is. And I will just take little parts to the sewing machine so I don't forget how I want them laid out. And so, for example, I will take this piece and this piece, and I will just stitch across it, across it with a large zigzag stitch. And then I'll come get this piece, lay it over top, and I won't be doing any pinning or anything like that. Zigzag stitch, and then I want it attached to this little doily right down here. And then I will take these little half pieces and I'll just do a little pinch pleating as I sew it along the bottom again using a zigzag stitch. And I will do that to the whole scarf. Okay, so here's what it's looking like all sewn together. So cute. Now what I want to do is take it up to my laundry room and dye it blue and I'll show you what I do. Okay, I'm going to dye right in my washer. When I'm done dyeing, I'm going to do an empty load with hot soapy water to clean my washer. And I'm going to start by using one cup of just regular table salt and putting that in. And I have denim blue writ dye. You need to shake it well. I only have about this much left, so I'm just going to pour that all in there. I like the denim blue because it looks cute with jeans. And I already put this in. This is navy blue because I didn't feel like I would have enough of this. And I only had about maybe a tenth of that left and I poured that in as well. Now, I'm going to shut my washer and let it fill up with water for a couple minutes before I put my lace in. Okay, I just stuck my scarf in here and I'm going to let it run through the whole cycle and then I will tumble dry mine on low 
which I don't find a lot of shrinkage when I do that. But if you're concerned about your lace, definitely you can line dry it or lay it over a laundry drying rack. Okay, so while the scarf is dying, I'm going to make the vines and flowers and get them prepped to sew on. And I'm going to use olive green felt. I get mine at Hobby Lobby. They're like 25 cents. I have three here. I have extra if I need it, but I doubt if I will. Um, felt, I'm researching it a little bit. You cannot wash it in the washer. It will fall apart, evidently. Some people say that you can hand wash it gently with wool light, but I would probably just get mine dry cleaned. Now, I have done another scarf where I've used suede, and that is up to you whether you want to wash it or not. I do because I pre-wash my suede jackets and things like that before I even start my craft. Or green t-shirts. They do, the jersey fabric on a t-shirt does not fray and it's washable. So there's some options. So let's cut the binds. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just round these corners. And then I'm going to start at the edge and I'm going to cut a spiral. I'll cut all this up about three quarters of an inch wide. Now, some will be wider, some parts will be thinner. You cut it how you want it. So I am just going to keep cutting around and around till I have it all cut. And now I am just going to give it a little tug. It, it just seems to be not so fresh cutting looking, more natural. If you pull too hard, it will break. So I'm just going to give this all a little bit of a tug. Now this is how long of a piece I have gotten. This might be enough. I'm going to cut one more just so I don't have to stop and do it in case I feel I want another piece. Okay, I set my felt aside for now and I'm going to work on the flowers. And I have this red velvet shirt that I thrifted and I'm going to make two big roses. Okay, so I opened my shirt up and it's 45 inches long this way. And I have 16 inches from here to here. So I want two flowers. I'm going to just go with what I have and make each one eight inches tall. So 44 by eight inches tall. And I will just start cutting them. Okay, so I need a needle and a thread. Um, you probably can't see this very well. It's just a double thread with a knot at the bottom, just like typical sewing. Oops. And then I'm going to take my velvet and I'm going to lay it wrong side up and fold it in half. Okay. So I have this all folded in half. There's the open side down by me. And I'm going to take my needle and thread and at one corner, now I have a whole video on this. The, I'll put the link in my description. It's a, how to make these flowers and some other things that you can do with it. Now I'm just going to run it through here so that it doesn't go anywhere on me. And I am basically just going to baste these two sides together all the way down. Now I'll probably go, you know, when I get in a hurry, it's more like three quarters of an inch. I try to stay around half an inch stitch, half an inch apart, but you know, you get in a hurry and you do a lot of these tend to go further and further apart. So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way down to the other end. Okay, so I have that all done 
And now I'm just going to scrunch it up. Just hold on to that thread. Don't pull too tight. Now, these are pretty close together. I'm not making it as tight as it will go because I want it to be a little, if I did that, it would really shrink up and I wouldn't have anything to work with. So I want something to work with here. So I'm going to leave it about like that. And now I will tie it off at this end, make a little knot so that my pleats stay right where they need to be. Okay, so here's my thread. It's still attached. I'm not going to snip that off because I will need it in a second. Now this will be the bottom side of the flower where the thread is. And now I'm just going to take this and fold it in on itself. And I'm making each layer smaller and smaller, but I'm trying to keep this pleated end side towards the center. Now this takes some practice. I've had talked to people who, I just can't get that, but you know, I've done so many of these and you just get faster and better over time. This takes a little practice. Now that I have everything I think that looks like a pretty good rose. I'm going to take this end that's still attached, go up through the back. Now, when I do this, I try to stay towards the center, but I do use the needle and thread to help shape the flower a little bit. If I have an end like this, this that is way protruding, maybe I'll stick the needle in and pull that in a little bit. So this just takes a little bit of artistry. Take your time and put lots of stitches in. When I run out of this thread that I'm using right now, I will reload my needle and sew it again. I do not want these to fall apart. Okay, here it is out of the dryer. Now it's time to decorate it. Okay, the first thing I want to do is sew the vines on. And this is just super simple. You go to your machine, and I'm going to let mine hang past these little ruffles a little bit. And then I'm going to start right at the top of these ruffles because I want this to be sort of free flowing. And then I'll put my needle in. I'm going to use a straight stitch in a coordinating color. And I am just going to sew just kind of a little snake all the way around this scarf until I get to the opposite end. If I run out, I'll just grab my other piece, overlap it, and keep on going. vines all sewn on and now I have to decide where I want my flowers okay so I'm just taking a couple straight pins and pinning them on where I want them now I want this one sort of low this will be asymmetrical and I want this one a little higher and I have to decide what direction the flower looks the best and then I'm going to stick a pin at the top And I'm going to stick a pin at the bottom. Okay, now all I'm going to do is sew it to the scarf. And I just threaded my needle again with a coordinating color. And I always start in the center, sewing it there. Depending on how big the flower is, if it's 
medium. I'll go in the center, top, side, bottom, other side to sew it on. Now this is a little larger, so I may go center and maybe two about there, one there. I'll just have to feel it out and make sure nothing's flopping up. So you just sew really wherever you think it's going to make your flowers secure. And I just start in the back, go up through the center, and I'll do it a bunch of times to make sure it's very secure. So in the center, maybe eight times. And same with the other stitches. Okay, I'll get that sewn up. Just a quick note here. I'm not sewing at the very edge of the flower. I'm coming in about an inch and a half so that the little edges still have dimension. Okay, here is all done. What a difference from the start with just the lace, right? So fun. Now, if the flowers, if I explain it a little fast to you, like I said, I'll put a link to a tutorial in my description. And that tutorial is all about flowers, only flowers. So thank you so much for watching. I'll bring it in a little closer so you can see more of the details.